Before I start the talk, I would like to invite you to say thank you to yourself because we all have come a long way. In recent years, the world has faced many challenges and the environment around us is undergoing great changes. I know it's hard for you, so I'm grateful to see you still taking time to sit here and listen. I hope what I'm about to say can make you feel better. We have to be honest with ourselves. We are the same. We often want to be, be um, understood or praised by others. Sometimes, when you make a mistake, maybe most of, most of the bystander will just blame at you. However, you know that it is not a normal you. Maybe you just had a bad day that affects your mood. But people like to deny you as a whole based on a tiny glitch. Facing this frustration, we often long for someone who stands up and asks us, is anything going okay? Do you need any help? Hey, we don't have to feel shameful about how we are afraid that our weaknesses will be seen through. Instead, we have to admit that we want acceptance from others because it does inspire us. So, what does this have to do with reconnect? I think most of you have heard a saying called reconcile with yourself. I know that it is kind of abstract, but I will try my best to make it more concrete today by sharing some personal stories. When I was four, I had to leave my dear grandma and move to a new city to meet my parents. Leaving with them was not secure at first. So I always envied my friends who had a complete family, while in my family, the figure that I looked for was missing. Someone who always offered me a big warm hug, called my little nickname, and so on. The new home felt quiet, so quiet that, that I could no longer fall into a peaceful sleep without her bedtime stories, patting my little tummy softly and slowly. She doesn't know that many stories, actually, but I needed them. My heart was hollow without her voice, the food she makes, the clothes she sews. I needed some happiness in my life, someone who can make me laugh when I'm depressed and accompany me when I was alone. I wanted attention so much that I started to become anxious about what other people thought. It's funny now when I think about it. I had body shame earlier than most people do. Before I could access any social media, I started to compare my legs with those of my friends and fell into an endless struggle with the feeling of inferior. I remember my elementary school's uniform was quite tight, so every time when I wore those pants, I would wear a long coat to cover up my thighs, but then the long coat made my leg look so short, so nothing was right. I did not know what to do. I would love to have my legs cut off and replaced, and I often Complain to my mom by saying that my dad never gets fat even if he eats a lot. When you are at my age, you are so skinny as well. Why do I get fat so easily? It is not fair. Later, when I transferred to international school, my anxiety increased. Everyone here was pretty, had a good personality, and good at dressing up. Every now and then, I got compared. And those voices made me feel so uncomfortable, like, look at other people, then look at you. Every time when I take, uh, took a photo with someone else, I felt embarrassed to show my face, and I always wanted to hide at the back. If I got a full body shot, I would Photoshop it for, sh for sure. Later, during my adolescence year, I got, so many, I got a lot of acne on my face, including now. I used to hate my face. Why couldn't I be clean? Because of this, I um, started putting on makeup. However, makeup hurts our skin. But to look less dirty, I put lots of concealer on my face and turned my face into a skin color that looked completely different than my neck. However, I did not realize at first because all I wanted was to cover my, cover my acne. As the anxiety increased, I became the opposite of myself. I hated myself and even started wondering why I was the way I was. Finally, I took the most radical approach, dieting. I did lose weight, a lot of weight, but my body started giving give me, give me a rest sign. I often have stomach ache or fluctuations, even though I barely eat. However, I didn't pay attention at first because I feel like getting skinnier made me happy enough. But then, a month later, I started to struggle to drink. I got scared, so I went to the hospital, did examination, and the doctor told me I got gastritis. Wow, I really couldn't eat anymore. Soon, I lost 15 pounds, 
But then I noticed the location of my abdominal pain has changed. So I went back to the hospital, and the doctor told me my stomach has sagged, which is called the um, gastroptosis. But he gave me post-operation uh, nutrient solution and asked me to drink every day to gain my weight back. I was devastated at first, not because I need to gain weight again, but my body was as weak as a post-operation patient. Every morning, I went to school, and in the afternoon, I went to the hospital for acupuncture treatment. Seeing my belly full of needles, I did not believe I could get any better. What was worse was that, at that time, I got cut from varsity volleyball team and APAC choir, the two teams that I have dreamed to be in. I was so disappointed at myself because I feel like I couldn't even succeed in the field I have put a lot of effort in. When I had my appointment again, the doctor told me um, keep taking stomach medicine seems unnecessary when I need to take emotional control pills. I went from anxious to depressed. But it was since then, I started to realize maybe I should do something to heal myself. I stopped play, playing volleyball for a very long time after I got caught from team because I feel like no matter how much effort I put in, no one would see it. It wasn't until I felt ill that I gradually found out the things and people I couldn't lose in life. When I look back to my volleyball journey, I took each step steadily. When I started playing the sport, people around me told me that, oh, Helen, you are, you are too short. You can never be the starter anyway. Obviously, I did not listen to them, and I was even more motivated to prove my passion. Though throughout the journey, I experienced lots of failures and injuries, I was able to push myself again and again. I grew from the quietest girl in the team to today's captain and MVP. However, I know that these two titles don't mean that I'm a fascinated volleyball player because I know, you know a lot of players in my team play better volleyball than me. But as long as I am keep pursuing my dream, that's enough for me. I have to emphasize this. I learned to love myself. When I got the MVP, the moment I stood on the podium, I told myself, Helen, you have been shining all the time. I realized that no one else would accept me if I did not accept myself in the first place. I had become the person I needed when I was younger. I took my shortcomings and weaknesses. Some people were born with skinny legs, but I wasn't. As an athlete, I need muscle, I need strength. I want to be powerful enough to spike the ball without breaking myself. That's all I need. There are roughly 3.5 billion women in the world, and I guess Yes, many of them are super skinny, but not all of them can play volleyball. I used to do everything I could to stand out. I was a serious girl, but in a negative way. If someone hurt me, misunderstood me, or slandered me, I would not forgive, and I would try my best to prove them wrong. However, I eventually, eventually realized that it was impossible. I'm in love with so many things, but not all of them can represent me well. I learned to get along well with my imperfection. And you know what? What's wrong with being imperfect? I mean, that's where your potentials are. Although I advocate for self-confidence, we should not be greedy. Time is limited, and there will always be someone who doesn't like us. So why would us wasting our time to try to make everyone else happy? I give myself freedom, and since I wasn't bound by comments anymore, I became more comfortable with doing my things, and I'm proud of my achievements. We have to be good to ourselves, reconcile with ourselves, and know ourselves anew. Reconnecting with ourselves is analyzing the past, rediscovering family affection, friendship, love, and remoting ourselves. Reconciliation leaves a place in our heart so that the right people and things can come in. If we make peace in ourselves, we are ready for a fresh start. Reconcile with yourself, reconnect with yourself. I hope that this concept doesn't seem so fuzzy to you now. However, what it means explicitly to each of you is up to you. Today, I'm here to encourage you to find your new self. 
but you make a choice. I hope that you all can meet your better self along the way. Please remember, the future is new. The future is yours. Thank you.